you like to begin by um, sharing your full name and where we are today? I'm Elizabeth Haynes and we're sitting in my kitchen um, at Bryn Morris, uh, Rosvach, near Manclochog in North Pembrokeshire and we look out of the window and we see Foyle and Kerwin in the sunshine. Lovely. Um, can you start by telling me then how long you've lived here and perhaps what your earliest or first memories of this place is? I've lived here in this house since 1971 when my husband and I bought it. Uh, it's a little farm of 33 acres. Pr previously to that we had lived since we were married in 1968 at Tichlosk, you know, that goes over the over the mountain road. When I first met him, he lived in Dorleibach over the road because my parents had taken the lease of a, of a cottage, Minnes D, where you go down a cart track up from the road going over the mountains and Minnes D is, is right at the bottom of that track. The address was Rosebush, but you you get yes. you can get to it by going across the moor at Rosebush, um, you know, going along un, under the under the um, you know the track the track that goes under under mm -hmm. the what am I trying to say the, the slate quarries um, or or down this track and that was where I met Cliff when he was a shepherd on Tichlosk Farm. And so, he, so he, was he from this area then? He was from Milford Haven. Um, his father was a seaman and who was born one of 13 children in that tiny cottage that goes down to Marlow's Sands. If you've ever walked down to Marlow's Sands, it's a yes. tiny cottage. That's where Howard Warlow was, was born. And his mother, Gladys, was born, the last person to be born, on the island of Skokum because her father, John Bulldog Edwards, was the last man to farm Skokum. Wow. And there's an extraordinary story when she was born on a wild night in January, whenever it was, I can't even remember now how, how old, I have to work out how old it was. Um, and his wife you know, was about to give birth and he got into an open rowing boat and rowed across from Skokum landing in Marlowe's and going up up that track to fetch Tilly Hayden the midwife who got into the open boat with him and went back to Skokum Amazing. and it is in the book I think The Sounds Between by Roscoe Howells wow. I think there's a mention of it and there's a photograph of Bulldog Edwards there who was a bit of a renowned character well with um, a name like that yeah, yeah well I think so I think he was a bit of a boy anyway that was my husband's mother and father. So that's where they came from. Wow. And he was brought up at East, on Eastfield Farm, St Brides. Mm. But he more or less ran away to the island of Mull in the 1950s, where he lived for a while with a lady now who's sort of got, gone into folk history called Chrissy, who lived right at the end of Loch Screeden and the island of Mull. Um, there's a book about her called, called Tea with Chrissy, and she was the custodian of the ancient, ancient fossil tree at the end of Loch Screeden. I mean, it's still only a cart track. We went there twice, we revisited it, once, once on our honeymoon, but the weather was so bad that there'd been a landslide and you couldn't get down the, uh, this long track, you know, which went along the edge of the, of the loch. And then when our son was eight or nine, um, and by, by then, of course, Chrissy, Chrissy had long gone, but it's a very, very interesting story. Mm -hmm. The Terroran estate, and Cliff tells me of stories of poaching red deer up on Ben Moore, you know, and, and all wow. this kind of thing. And he then went on to become a shepherd on the Baddensgill estate, West Lothian, just north of Edinburgh. And that's where he stayed for seven years and learnt his shepherding skills, mm. and but his mother then was still living in, in Milford and he used to drive back with all his dogs and he used to stop, he tells me, at Tichlosk um, to ask if he could give his dogs a run or he used to stop on the open mountain. Anyway, it was there, stopping with his dogs, that he met Major Hamish Stuart Peters, who lived there at the time, who was a, another 
great local character. Um, and Hamish Stuart Peters said, oh yes, you can run your dogs. And he saw Cliff's dogs working and said, will you come and work for me? Mm. Um, and that's how that I met him when my parents took over the lease of Minnie's D, which is this cottage right right down at least a mile car track. Um, and, Cl and I met Cliff walking round all these acres with his five dogs. Border, border Collies All then? Border Collies, yes. And he and trained them himself then? Oh, oh yes, wow. yes. They, they, were, they were extraordinary dogs, mm. absolutely extraordinary. Um, I can remember, I can tell you lots of stor stories about these dogs, you know, it depends what you've got, got time for or want to hear. Wow. I, I know that there was one uh, on Instagram recently, there was a young shepherd, I don't suppose I can find it now, um, who, who, who has his dogs on Instagram, you know, and this and that, and the dogs do this, and, and here's, here's my dog, but he won't do a thing until I tell him, and there's a, the, the little video of the dog wait, wait, waiting there, um, waiting for a, a response from his master, and it prompted me to make a comment, I can remember, walking across those fields at Tichlosk, and I can remember exactly where we were, and Jock, his absolutely one-time best dog in the world, suddenly peeled away, singled out, they were, they were lambing ewes, singled out a ewe from amongst a flock of, you know, 1,000, 2,000, an enormous number, um, and drove her into one of the pens that Cliff prepared at various places in the field. And he just drove her into the pen and then sat down at the entrance to the pen and turned round to Cliff as if to say, well, come on then. And Cliff went and found that she was in the very early stages of a difficult labour, not yet obvious to any shepherd's eye, but she was going to have a problem. And the dog had in some way sensed this. Mm -hmm. So he lambed the ewe all the time Jock laid there and said, yeah, well, I, know, I told you so. And so there was... All sorts of stories like like that. Yes, once in a lifetime dog. Then uh, he was a once in a lifetime dog. Yeah. Yes, but he Cliff never really was much for sheepdog trials. So he didn't have the temperament. Um, he himself mm. didn't have the temperament. Um, so it was, you know, when you had two thousand sheep in your flock, you know, it was a rather different technique. And when we came here. Um, you know, it was it was a bit different having only these these small acres, but but certainly when when we were there, um, I can, yes, I can think of him standing at that gate opposite Tichlosk, where there's an old ruined shed now. If you go over the mountain, you know the one. It's yeah. it's slowly descending. Well, that was Cliff's dog shed. Wow. And you'd go in there and open it, and the dogs would all come out in the morning. Well, I can remember him with his old brown dog. I'll show you a portrait I, I did of him, dear old Sweep, who wasn't terrific for in-by work, but was wonderful at a distance. And Cliff stood by the gate by this old um, dog shed, and he just said to Cliff, to, to Sweep, get away back. And Sweep start, you can see, you can see Minith D, and you can see the, the hill mm. where, in fact, 18 months ago, there was a tremendous fire. They were burning the gorse and it got out of control. Do you remember? You could, I do remember. You could see it from Milford. Mm. Anyway, that's, that's where, and Sweep went until you could hardly see him and he poised on the top of this hill above Minith D and, either, and Cliff either whistled, I can't remember, or even it was too far for his whistle to carry and he, he went like that, a gesture, and the dog went further get away back until he was right in the gully mm. and came back with half a dozen sheep that Cliff had thought perhaps might yes. be there but he found them and and I think at that point he said oh well we can go in and make a cup of tea now and of course I was terribly impressed by this <laughs> no. was this before you Mar married oh yeah. yes oh yes, yes. This, yes this was quite something quite something anyway go oh, we can go in and make a cup of tea now so was uh, that his main love then, the, 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 the dogs? The, the work, the, well, yes. I mean, you, you, yes, well, you, you, had, you had to love dogs. And he of also made, made wonderful shepherd's crooks out of oh, ram's wow. horns. Yes, yes. Um, 
so that was it and then then we came here but because it cost it was such a small acreage you then had to go out and do fencing and, and other things mm. so it was it was a bit different but you know it was our own place yes oh great stories yeah yes i can re i can remember it yeah uh, wait a minute and we'll go on to another question yeah So what struck you as different um, here to maybe, maybe where you lived before coming to the Which was Hertfordshire. It was wild. It was wild. Wild here? Yeah, oh, yes, yes, yes. But yes. Hertfordshire was, you know, it's lovely, it still is. But you know, ro rolling fields, mm. trees that go on growing vertically. Um, and here, yes, yes, it was in, in a word, the wildness. Is there any sort of standout memory for you of your early days here? Well, the early days were just when I was with, with my parents staying in the cottage in Minnes D when I was at art school and, and coming back and forth in holidays. And how old were you then, do you think? 20. Yes, 20. Mm -hmm. I suppose we were, that would be 19, oh dear. Mid mid nineteen sixties, and then we were married in nineteen sixty eight. Um, well, the, the standout memories is just. I suppose I I had, despite living in Hertfordshire and on the outskirts of a village, I'd spent my childhood, um, going up and down to a farm on the outskirts of the village, and and working with cart horses and and all sorts. So I was well used. To, to country life I hadn't yes. I didn't I wasn't interested you know in going to parties and that sort of thing so mm -hmm. this was this was something I I, I fell into S suited your yeah, yeah yes 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 yes, yes. Um, and somewhere that I could see that I could I could work and paint you know and when mm -hmm. I was coming down I was I was I've got sketchbooks full of all the the early early things that I did when I was first coming here mm. um, and so right from the start what you might call the the character, the the aesthetic of this area, you know, embedded itself mm. into into my memory, and it and it still coming out now. You know, pages and pages of books, of drawings, of of, of thorn trees and mm. and sheep and and hills. Is that uh, the way you would describe it to someone that hadn't been here before? Is that the way that you describe the Preseli area? Do you think? Yes, it was a it was an ancient place. It was didn't have the trappings of civilization in the same way that Hart I mean Hartfordshire, yes, it was very interesting. Um and in as much as I'd become interested in the the sort of history and culture, um it didn't it didn't go back to the to the ancient people in the same way mm. that that um the stones and things round here bear you know very eloquent testimony to the activities yeah. um of people however many thousands of years ago so it feels wild here but still has that human it, imprint it, 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 yes and and it's about the struggle i think i mean if you look out of the window you you can see the traces you'd see it better in if the sun was very low morning or evening can you see the traces of a little holding up there. There's yes. one little tree, and if you look to the left and up a bit, can you see the edge of that? Yes. So there must have been a havod there. The yes, so there must, there have, must have, been have been a spring. Been. How on earth they got there? There's all these remnants of these sheep folds and so on. Yes. If you look closely, um, and it has got a name. There's a there's a book um, of aerial photographs by Tony Driver. Do you yes. know? Do you know that? Yeah. Well, you know yes. who I mean, and he's he's taken wonderful photographs, usually at at eight o'clock on a December's morning, you know, with a bit of mm. frost, and you can see it clearly. But at one time, all these little houses, Bryn Morris, that one, Menith Conbach, um, Trasnant, Kyle Mine Fluid, Menith Crun, there was a place called Red Chickens. Ithbed, and then there's another ruin near Ithbed. Well, you think a hundred years ago, 
those have, would have all been little a, farms. A terrific, yes. And then there was, if you look over there, towards Hava D, there's another one in between here and Hava D. Yes. And they would all have, like this, I suppose, 20 or 30 acres. Mm. And people would be able to sustain themselves. Sustain themselves. And you could imagine they would all help each other at harvest. Yes, there's a community around those sort of... Yes, it, sustaining... Um, a style of life that was probably all, all, certainly all over Europe. I mean, you hear of these things disappearing in the in the Carpathians, where, where wherever, um, of lots of, of, of as it were little people doing doing small amounts. Mm. Whereas now, of necessity, it's it's sort of changed changed hugely. And big families then, a lot of them. Yes. Well, y y yes, probably now. Hugh Bach lived here, and I know we found his tiny little wooden clogs that he was to have worn as a small boy in the um, in the cab shed, wow. which I've still got. Um, extremely uncomfortable, and I think it was he who said, "I can't think of his proper name, but it was it was Hugh Bach who sold it to the people in Manclochog who we bought it from." Um, and he used to, well, he, no, it was then his son who came and he said as a boy, therefore when Hugh Bach being the, the father, mm. who had a tiny little black car, as, as befits his name, which was kept in a very tiny ancient shed on the, on the yard there, and the son, I'm afraid whose name I've forgotten, said that in the morning, I used to put the milk churn on the pedal of my bicycle and take it up to the milk stand. I'm quite sure as a schoolboy he didn't heave the full churn onto the milk stand, but anyway, that's he, t he took it up. Amazing. Um, we, we have gone a bit back to the history of this place, but you know, if my father had been enjoined to start on it, he, goodness knows what he would have found. Yes. Um, So who were the important, say, local people and so on when you were growing up here, you know, from 20 onwards? Um, what kind of work did people do locally? Um, possibly social activities that took place then that don't happen now? Was it, di very, was it very mm, different? I find, I find that a bit difficult, social activities. Um, Never have been a great party goer, I'm afraid. So, I've sort of either our friends or mm. mine didn't just tend to be the local community. You met quite early on. I met artists who were in the area, like John Nat Fisher, for instance, and mm. the, and and Jonathan and Elizabeth Cramp in Fishguard. So I would tend to have Spend more more them. contact with them pe just people who not geographically close but whose interests you you shared mm, yeah. so um whereas cliff would still be you know more more with the local the local people in the pub and so on and so on so um, you'd go to the globe or tavern sink tavern sink you would go to the new inn to New Inn, of course, yes. It would be New Inn from up from Rosebush. Um, mm. uh, I did know Peg at Tavern Zinc and Danny. I've got a drawing of Danny sitting on his set on the settle in Tavern Zinc mm. because the very first time I came down here, I think I stayed when Peg had a cottage num number one, the terrace. Yes. So I think I stayed there when the post office, when we first came, there was a lady, and I can't, I can't remember her name, who, you know, you, the post office and the shop. Was next door to the... Um, yes. Sink, yes, 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 yes. And it, I think it then became a restaurant for one at, at one point. I, I think it still says bistro. Or Does it? On it? Yes. yes. Obviously not, not so now. But no, um, no. Um... So yes, I can remember Peg and Danny, and I've got drawings of 
of farmers in, in the pub. I've heard the peg was quite a, a character. Oh, she was quite a character, yes. No, no, she did look after Cliff when he was single. Gave him food and so on, <laughs> yes. Encouraged him to have another pint, no doubt. Probably. Yes. <laughs> Were there any sort of big local celebrations and events locally that... Um, maybe you didn't get involved with, that you were aware of, that don't happen now? When did the, mm. when did the, the fair end in, in Mount Oh, Cosmo? I don't remember. Was that before your time? Oh, yes, yes, it was. But I had to look up all these photographs because, you know, in the Mount Clochon Village Hall, I did the big... The big the painting... The, the big mural. mural, mural yes. thing, yeah. So in doing that... I uh, enjoyed finding lots and lots of photographs um, of things. And for instance, from my own, of all the things, if I can remember it, um, have I got time to just go and find that print in the other room and bring Please it do. back? Yeah. Yes, just to... Um, That's fine, yeah. Because um, then I can point them out to you. You, you. That was the print that was done. Yes, I always enjoy looking at it when I go into the community centre. So, there is Cliff crossing the river, and there's Tithosk under Boilera, and there's the Rosebush Reservoir. Yes. Um, and all this is Erwin George is is poetry. That is. Is Garnavra up there? Yes. That's from a from a drawing on. It's not quite accurate, but that is Bryn Davis's corn stacks near Rosebush. Yes. I can remember Bryn, wow. and he made the most wonderful mats out of baler twine. Oh. And I've got a, a drawing. In the, well, it must be 1965 of the one of the last of his corn stacks. So they went in Fantastic. there. Fantastic. That would be now. That's from a photograph. That's when the um, the slate workers. Yes. That factory house. You know, on the on the on the I've going down there. The, I've seen the photograph of, of what that. that's based on. Yes. And then, when the train was running, that ran over the bridge there. I, I know where that bridge was is, or is. Yes. yes. Temple Druid. Yeah. Joseph James. That's Gareth Bernard's well with his Welsh blacks, and this is just a typical little cottage that could yes. be anywhere. Now, just a minute. No, that that's Joseph James, and so that would be Glyn Scytheman, the yes. stone there. Yes, W.R. Evans. Yeah, that's it. Yes. This was when the Americans were in Rosebush, the little tent. So I've did, seen that photograph so as well. So I did that yes. from the photograph. There's Tavern Zinc. Yes. And the slate quarries. That is the station, which of course they've renovated recently. Actually, yeah, they, yes, yes, new renovation again on it. Um, coming round here, here's the fair. That's it. As you see, sooner, sooner, oil, gavlogi. Yes. So that, and there was an old um, clockmakers in the village there. Okay. The left near yeah. where the Anans are. Yeah. Here's, of course, the thatch cottage and the two old ladies. So that's um, Penrose. Penrose, yes. yes. Here's the school. That's from a drawing that I did in 1980-something, early 80s, for their commemorative plate. Yes. That's when the children still rushed across the road <laughs> for all the, you know, 20 miles an hour oh, and traffic yes. pumps and all the rest of it. So there they are, kicking a ball about. In front, there's Dillwyn. Yes, Dillwyn Edwards, the com comedian and entertainer. Yes, yes. There is Shop Esquire, Manclochog, now a Café Esquire. Yes. And that's the two sisters of the Georges. Okay. The, the George family who went, they 
emigrated to London, oh. where they took a hotel in Norfolk Square. Wow. Where I used to stay sometimes when I went up. Yeah, that's fair. Um, here's the main street and an old car. Now, that is very small, but when you see it again, on the bike is Canon Hamer, the old, okay. the, 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 um, the vicar, who was wonderful, was always around on his bike chatting to people, and that is Dan Picton House he's okay. talking to. Took mm. him from a drawing. Taken from a drawing man, yes. There's it's either Hen Capel or the other one. Yeah, I think that is yes. Hen Capel, yes. yes. There, there's Hugh Bach's boots. There's the clogs. Yeah. It's an old jug, and that's Fantastic. a stone from somewhere. That's the village, that's the globe. Yes. And that's as it used to be when the castle. The castle. Prior to that, the chemist's shop with dear Mr. Thomas, who was the chemist when I first came. So you remember? Oh yes, that, he yeah. was wonderful. You know, you'd go in there wanting something, and he'd. In fact, I've still got a packet that I can't throw away containing his patent sheet dip powders or something. You know, it's wrapped fantastic. up in brown so paper. So he'd have a bit of everything in there. He would have a bit of everything, and he was wonderful. And but it was a ladies' draper's shop. And so there they are coming out with the latest fashions. There is the 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 red tin house, and that when when I came was Emlyn the butcher. Oh, okay, yes. And went to where Cliff would go and and queue up to get meat, meat meat on a Saturday, which was just that that was the social occasion of the week, really. And that was a busy time. That was a very busy time, and the meat, his Emlyn's ribs of beef, which had been hanging. For in, little coal in, shed in the yeah, in yeah. in that shed round the back for you know however long, um, getting nice and mature. Oh, getting wonderfully mature. There's what I imagine the castle to be like, approached oh. from the other side because all, all these have got little yes. bits of of Erwin's poetry. Yeah, yeah, here near Grygar, Banca Castell. Um, that was an old plate, a commemorative plate I had from somebody. It's There's the, the the railway, and there that is in inside the, the one of the chapels. One of the chapels, and that was. Oh dear, now what's her name? She she was the choir mistress, and there she is. She lived towards yeah. up towards the um, thatched cottage up on ah. the right there. Do you know you go down? I know what you mean. But and she's up on up on. Oh dear. Her name's probably anyway. She. Um, where, what year did you do this work? Two thousand and five. But I can remember the Erwin's poems would go round and can it is heavy with many the amount of a Friday shechray you shall have my Yeah, they were very, wonderful. Very soon a winter wine or manog, a soon shechray I or my Beautiful. And he even wrote very beautifully in English, the bells of our thoughts are the bells that we find in the land of the stone and the song of the wind. Beautiful. It, it is very beautiful. Very evocative. Cyfro Cof is lovely. Cyfro Cof Ias Hyn So the yeah. excitement of, the, uh, of your memories and uh, yeah, yesterday's. Yes. And I... All the time I was doing this, these were going round and round in my head. So they were inspiring. Oh, oh, inspiring absolutely. Yeah. Well, that was the whole idea that that it was a, a joint effort. Oh, well, I'm glad I could lay hands on that. There we are. So that's a a, a very large um, yes piece of work that sits now in, in the in entrance. The, yes, to the village hall. Yes, yeah, yes. It was great to be able to to be asked to do that. I really enjoyed doing it and all the research. I think it's yeah. enjoyed, well, it's, it's going to be enjoyed by the community forevermore. Really. Hope so, hope so, it's, uh, yes. It's fantastic. Um, I'm going to move on a little bit now. So would your own family have had an interest in some of the local history, the people and places around the area? Well, yes, because my... For Arthur, I don't have brothers or sisters, but my father and mother moved to Hebron in the year after we moved here, 1972, when he retired um, from being a bank manager and really embarked on a completely new life on a, on a small farm 
Um, my mother was, was the one that was keen on the sheep and daddy was in the garden, but he also developed a very strong interest in local history um, and started in a small way by researching the history of the house Kairéron, Hebron. Um, and in the end, he got back. He would go, go trips up to the National Library. Um, and then, having done the one house, he thought the, ne the one next door, which was um, at Trehal, and he began to wonder whether perhaps that had anything to do with Howell Dhar, and so got interested in that connection, and they were very good friends with Georgie Howells, who lived there. Um, and so he, yes, did what amounted to 30, 30 years research, doing, I think, all the properties within three miles of Kairéron. Wow. So it went almost as far as where you tell me you live just the other side of Glandua Bridge, yes. and it went down as far as Hridoin, mm. and up as far as Pantikaus and a bit of the way up those two hills that lead up to the A478. To the main road, yes. Um, and he got, he used to go up to the National Library on the day when my mother had, having, from a lifetime in doing craft and sewing and one sort of thing and thing and another, became interested in, well, I think she already had started becoming interested in spinning, weaving and dyeing. She started the Pembrokeshire Guild of Spinners, Weavers and Dyers and they had a lot of farm buildings and every Thursday she would have a, you know, a group of ladies and they'd be you know boiling up onion skins and lichen and making felt and wow. doing all, all manner of things um, and she would have workshops with local school children. I've got some wonderful photographs of the children from Glandua School and other places and on those days Daddy would escape up to the National <laughs> library and I would quite often go with him because they had a very good colour photocopier at the time and so I would be photocopying mm. my work and he became became absolutely fascinated and with with all the stories that emerged you know going certainly going back to the mid 18th century or as far as he could could go um, of all the goings on and the farming and and I um, did the illustrations for the little book that he produced which in the end was was a very precied version and it was just the history of the, the four schools mm. at Glandour mm. um, and which some of the, the, the goings on of the houses also you know, came, yeah. came into it because where they lived Kairéron was the home of a of a very interesting minister whose name, of course, escapes me at the moment, but there were photographs of him. And and he got into people. There's a stone up on the A478. Is it Jans Dovey? Who was... Yes. Have you come across that name? Right, there's Jans Dovey's stone, which, again, I went to draw rather precariously on a bend <laughs> on the Krimmick Road there. It's very busy, though. It's, it's very, very busy. Um, because he, you know, as you know, then he he did a lot for the for the local community. Mm. Um, and anyway, Daddy in nineteen ninety something or other, early nineteen nineties, produced this little book, the history of the Glandor schools, which I must give you some copies before yes, you go. Yes. Um, which which I you know was delighted to illustrate for him. It's remarkable, uh, really, that. Moving into an area, he had such a hunger to really get well, to I know yeah, the yeah, place. Well, yes, and like me, he he was fascinated with something that was a complete different from Hertfordshire. And he said, "Well, I didn't want to stay in Harpenden where we lived. I don't want to go and you know join the golf club or something." Mm -hmm. You know, he was rather like me; had no real interest in that sort of life, but was very much drawn to the extreme difference yes, of yes. of the of the life around here and and entered into it well not you know he I think they were both they did try and learn Welsh so they were they're both probably a bit old to do so well, and and possibly and less opportunities then. there were opportunities but not but he would struggle through various Welsh books 
which he had to read, you know, looking for information. And, you know, he would have a well-thumbed dictionary and find look, looking for names of places and consulting the local school teacher and so mm. on. But yes, so he, yes, got into the local community in a big way and also well, they were staunch supporters of Langledwin Church. Yes. And I'm sure he got to know the local community exceptionally he, well. He then. did, and one of their ne nearest neighbours at Hebron, Hebron was Cyril. Cyril and and Bet. Um, what was it? Did, who did they? Or was it Stephen? I, ca I can't. I can't remember. But, but the people that they they bought Carreran from didn't move very far. Stephen and Evelyn. That was it. And they just moved down the road. And then Cyril was Stephen's cousin, I think. Um, and it was through Cyril that Daddy discovered he could douse. I got a wonderful photograph of Dick. He, he did get on so well with Cyril. Um, Interesting. Yes, of them both with mm. their with their hazel hazel rods. Um, so yes, what what with that and 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 as I say, staunch members of the church. Um, my mother becoming involved in all the flower festivals and because mm. she in fact was a local preacher before they came down. So she was already. Yeah, she was in, in, yes. in yes, and they they were Methodists, mm. which um, but you know it makes no odds, does it? Um, so so yes, so in the years that they were flourishing over there, mm. um, I was also in sort of involved in that, that area to, to some extent. So what's it like to live here today, do you think, in the Preseli area? Well, I think it's very much dependent on what you do because I live a bit of a different life as a painter mm. from somebody who, you know, people say, isn't it isolated or... So you spend I'd... a lot of time here at home? Oh, oh, oh yes, work. yes. Yes, well, it's the only way you can can do it, really. Mm. You know, my my family come and visit, but they live in in Malvern. Son, daughter in law, and two grandchildren. Um, and again, the 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 people that I see most of are not necessarily the ones just up and down the road. No, no. They 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 may live several miles away, but they're those, you know, with whom I I have common um, interests. Y yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, what about the you know, you're looking out at this beautiful landscape yeah, yeah. here now. Is it different now than when you first moved here? Not really. It's it. Well, if you look out on the marsh, all that's different is that when we first came, all that was rushes. Yes. And certainly over the last seven or eight years, my son and grandson have with the Benassi mower have got rid and and my tenants cows chomping it, cattle. Um, they, uh, they they they've taken it back to it used to be. Do you, do you see? There's a fence up there which yes. I just put to stop the cattle going into a drainage ditch. Yes. But it used to be a little field. Do you see that it went across there where yes. the where the thing and, and it came down. Here and I think, and when we came, you know, I've got, I've probably got some paintings that I did, and it was it was gorse and so it was it was very very overgrown, oh, maybe. very very overgrown, mm. but now um, through grazing and so on through through grazing the bit at the top, I think that's um, definitely wild and, and and boggy, and there'll be all sorts of little people living up there, you know, and we just let them get off mm, with it. Yeah. Um, but but some of this, um, it's been brought back to mm. a bit where animals can benefit from it. Um, so if, you know, supposing I never, never listened to the news, you could, you could live here and think... Did nothing have changed? In some ways, no. So moving on then to you know, talking about changes. Um, if there are things that have changed, um, what things perhaps have caused changes? Technology, transport, politics, anything otherwise local you think that has changed the area over time? 
Well, at one time, should we say, I don't know, should we say 25 years ago, you got paid for draining your marsh, like that, mm. and then it was about turn, you know, because of awareness of conservation and, and what the mm. Minivag and so on saw fit to do. I then got paid, I think for 10 years, now it wasn't an SSI, but it was a, what was it called, an environmentally sensitive area. I got paid for not putting fertiliser on it, which I wouldn't do anyway, and for not putting land drains oh, or so other things in. Different schemes, see, and they? so I had that for 10 years. Um, but, you know, you still had, had cattle and sheep nibbling away, so it, it didn't make a most profound difference. No. Um, when I've burnt the gorse in the bottom marsh, which is even wilder, which actually my family were here only um, la last week, this time last week, we were setting fire to heaps of, you know, dead, dead stuff in the bottom marsh, because otherwise it would be, it would be completely overgrown. Yes, it's getting to that time of year now, isn't it? Where the yes, you the do, you do, come. yes. Oh yes, you, you can't burn here after the 25th of March. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, a few weeks later than in the lowland but once the the little um stone chats and things start no yeah. um but no i have i have managed the the lower marsh to some extent i've ha i've had a i've had a tree surgeon in there you know just cutting things back yeah. a bit so that you can get in uh, the children made a camp in there you know with some old rope from goodness from the docks at Milford Haven you know that my husband scrounged wow. all those years ago from his father who was you know on a, on a fishing mm -hmm. boat mm -hmm. so which had we not done that that just would would have been sort of rainforest yeah, <laughs> really and and he and Cliff planted trees about the year John was born 19 mid 1970s mm. or, or just after um little little trees that he took from the hedgerows when he was out doing contract fencing oh. little oaks ash birch and then planted them in amongst um conifer types which he got from Ryan who was then managing the forestry at Pant Maynog and Rosebush mm, yes and I know Ryan gave him a, a couple of loads of these Scots pine and so on. It's I've, quite a, a large forestry in Pantomime. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's how we got these. And and that, that little forest now, I'm still having to manage because, of course, some of, the, some of the trees got too close and now, you know, you've got to cut them out. Yes. And then so that the, the, the oaks that he planted are, are now beginning to branch out. Wow. And it's, no, it's lovely. And... Um, and making a, you know, very, very slowly, you get a, a little, you can see where a little trickle of water goes. And in fact, Sam, when he was only about eight, that's my grandson, he, um, we, could, we could see where the water was coming. And he said, look, if I just dig a bit here, you know, it'll come all the way down to the stream. And in fact, he did dig a little bit and the river did the rest. And it's now it's now draining nicely, a little channel, a little channel going going into the stream. So I'm I'm very interested in all that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and the sort of land management I think and fencing and going around. It somehow feeds into my painting even now. In a way that I can't quite explain. I mean, everything that I do is is usually got a an echo of landscape in it mm. even though it's become much more um well much less obviously figure figurative and descriptive in the same way that this um I understand yeah, yes. yes but i mean that was the sort of look, looking at the um the Meinklochog thing um the the basis of what i do now is is these kinds of drawings that I've done for the last 50 years in sketchbooks. Yeah. Only now it, it may be um, more, more suggestive and atmospheric and, and open 
to a number of different interpretations. So your style has uh, changed a little bit over time. It, it's changed quite radically. Mm. If you come and look in, in in the studios, most most definitely has. Mm. I mean, if you look, have you seen have you seen my Instagram, for instance? I have. Yes. Yeah. I think well, I follow if, you. <laughs> oh right. I think I well, do. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, for instance, well, there's that's a fairly new one, but Beautiful. also. Also, that was one. So you can see that that has still elements of landscape in it. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, you could see the line, possibly the line of the sea, if you're mm. somewhere at Carningley, mm. should we say, looking over the sea. Um, that is... But it leaves more interpretation It leaves. It leaves, yes. And it was Mallarmé that said... I would not wish to to deprive you of the delicious joy of imagining. Mm. Mm. So I wouldn't wish to deprive you. And, and if you look at that one, which is a very new one, you're going to see something in that that nobody else will. I saw that one earlier, actually. Yes. So you see, your interpretation... It's interesting, isn't it? ...has to do... With, with your your well your own person your own lens on it your your own lens on it or what philosophers would be pleased to call your cognitive stock you know <laughs> every, everything that you've seen and got yes. in your head yes. since you were a child yeah. gr growing up in in Brimberian. yeah yeah um, you know perhaps a stone or a, uh, something but it's probably all of these have probably still oh, I can't see it upside down. Um, have got something, I mean, of... But they've got your, your own style runs through them still. Run, runs through them, but, for instance, that one, I've just recently sold a few for the earthquake appeal, as mm -hmm. this time last year I was selling them for, for Ukraine, mm -hmm. and I know that that sort of thing will, will sell. It's a little pastel and I can offer it, you know, just in a mount and post it off to somebody. Well, that is done directly, if not from this window. You, yes. you can see it, okay. can't you? You can see yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, whereas that is is obviously um, done, done from life, then something like that is what I do in the studio. Interesting. But that's more, I, d I still don't know whether I'm going to leave it at that, but that... That looks like more of a, a coastal scape. Yes, it d yes. it does, because I do paint in France. And I've stayed a couple of times in a little village on the Gironde called mm. Talmont-sur-Gironde, mm. which is a very magical and extraordinary place. Wow. And you look across this vast expanse of water and there's the, the white cliffs the limestone cliffs i was going to say these look like white well cliffs. The, again it's it there's a lot of serendipity there because i i sand off old pictures because i get fed up with them and then and paint on top and well partly paint on top and partly leave leave bits coming through um it is uh, not something that's controlled at all in the same way that this more illustrative work, again, looking looking at the yeah. Mainklochog mural, which is more... Well, you approached uh, this uh, what approach, you're going to, yes. I knew what it had to be mm. um, to, to show, you know, to, to mm. celebrate the history of the area. And it was it's much more in, in technique and approach, like the book illustrations that I had to do for... Well, it started off, you know, soon after I was married in the 1960s, yeah. And I think the first commission I had was a was a uh, to illustrate an encyclopedia with four hundred drawings. So, Fantastic. yes, yes, it was for, for it work. Was, it was for for work. It was, but it wasn't ever what I really wanted to do. No. Um, but I carried on doing book illustration. Um, said said once to somebody, "Well, it's amazing what you'll do if your child needs a new pair of shoes." Um, well, of course. You know, you've got to got to make ends meet, haven't you? Well, not that's where some men artists maybe differ in that they're so single minded that they will actually not compromise what they do at all. No. And there are very fa obvious fa famous examples of this which we can't go into now. Um, but 
Anyway, suffice to say, from the they, no, they will, they will not shed, deviate. Basically. No, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not illustrating your whatever. This, no. this is what I do, no. and and in the end, those are the ones that come out as the ones who've changed the course of art. Cezanne, I mean, Cezanne was terribly rude about the local people in Aix en Provence. Um, you know, if 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 they'd asked Cezanne to do that, he he would have stuck two fingers up at them. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you just said, I'm not doing, no. I'm not doing it your way. No, no, not at all. Well, um, but then we all kneel at the feet of Cezanne because of, 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 of that was his approach. Mm. Mm. Um, and I can afford now slightly to stick some fingers up <laughs> if people ask me, but, um, you know, it's come quite late. Yes, yeah. Um, and it's been a slow, it's been a slow transition. Well, you're very well known in the local area, for definite. Um, well, of course, I wouldn't know. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, I, yes, well, <laughs> anyway. I mean, some people find it um, difficult, say, oh, you've changed your style. And I say, actually, if you looked at some of my sketchbooks from the 1970s and 80s, I was, I was branching out then. So that's sort of reminiscent of your work from... Yes. Many years ago. Yeah, yes, it is. I didn't just suddenly change overnight. Is, um, that, is that confidence on your part? Yes, you it think? is. It is confidence, um, and 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 some sort of an, an experience. Um, I suppose having that reputation now, people are more likely to think, "Well, I'll give it a go." Yes. But but still, some people would would look at that and say. What's it supposed to be? Some people like it, pictures. That, that they don't. do want something that's descriptive, mm. but then I've come to to accept that there's a very wide range of people's um, tastes, yeah. t- t- appreciations, uh, mm. probably according to how much art they look at. Of course, it's a bit you know a lot of contemporary music. Mm. Um, it's what you, you, your you, you, idea yeah, is get, you to. probably, if you've never listened to contemporary music, well, perhaps don't start with Stockhausen, you know, start <laughs> start with Messiaen or, you know, Bartok or whatever. Um, and uh, But, of course, children will come straight in. I mean, my... Do they, do they love that sort of work? No, oh, yes. And my grandchildren, they choose a p- little picture for themselves every year and almost inevitably... They, they would be something like that. They're, they're very, very open. And they like to put their own interpretation yes, on what they think yes, it is. Then. Yeah, 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 yes. Um, and it's not just them, you know, any... Or, one's doing a, a, a workshop, you know, I've, I've had the 26 six-year-olds from my Clochog school in the, <laughs> in the barn there, which is, you know, huge fun. Um, and any of that age group, they show this wonderful open-mindedness and they're lucky enough to have a absolutely super, super teacher who, who encourages them mm-hmm. um, in, in their approach. And, and also I've done, what was it, the, the A-level class from St David's. They likewise are all having a much better art education than I ever had, I have to say. Mm. Very, very, new, very conventional. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I think the new curriculum now, from what I understand, is offering that more broad approach for children, hopefully more art and so on. And also, they're they're aware. I know I went down to Narva School only a few years ago, and you know the children were asking questions and this and this and that. And I just mentioned Van Gogh, and immediately the teacher just went into her room and picked out um, you know a big reproduction which she obviously already had there, and said, "Here you are, children. This is this is what we're talking about." Mm. Um, well, that would have been unheard of when I was mm. Uh, mm. Uh, under eleven. I know, nobody would have had a clue. But the children had that access to that via that teacher then? Yes. Mm. Oh, yes, she was brilliant. She just lives locally, actually. Oh. Yeah, yes. No, there, there are some cracking teachers around here. There are some very good local teachers, oh, aren't they? Yeah. And they're very yeah. focused on the oh. local heritage as well, I think. Mm. Mm. Right, I'll move on a little bit. You running out of juice? No, we're we're all good. <laughs> I'm just checking that we're on the right track here. Do you think there is a kind of 
place identity across the Preseli area. Um, and do you feel a part of that identity? I think much of its identity is, is, is perhaps its diversity. Because, of course, there are remnants of the ancient and there are, rem there are still the old families, but then there's a lot of incomers. Mm. I mean, I didn't feel quite an incomer because I'd married a Pembrokeshire man, but, but obviously, as one knows, huge numbers of people have come in and, mm. and, you know, renovated old buildings and, you know, it hasn't got as bad as Cornwall, has it, where no. the local people can't, can't find somewhere to live? Well, as, as you were saying yourself, um, Interesting, somebody, I did a talk in Manclochog Hall in, I don't know when it was, on, on David Jones, why I love the artist David Jones. Mm. And somebody asked me about a sense of place. And I wasn't quick enough to quote what I thought David Jones might have said in that whatever place he was in, he thought about another place in that when he was at the the Hondi Valley, you know, near Lantoni and up towards Capelafine there, where I've also drawn. Yes. Um, and there was this, this wonderful hill called Tumpa. And I'm sure that part of his long poem, The Sleeping Lord, might have been, been mm -hmm. written there. Um, when he talks about does the land wake the sleeping lord or is this wasted land the very lord who sleeps so he was when he saw something and and i i i am inspired by this is that he he also could see something else or the other things that accrued into what he actually saw do, do, do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's not. It's not just one thing. If somebody says, I have to say, I never quite understand. Always, when when artists say, I, I celebrate a sense of place. Well, what actually do you mean? Because there's the the place that is, but then there's the place, the places of your mind, as well yeah. that that make it what it is and make it what it has been. Yeah. Because interestingly, my granddaughter, just this last time, came to me and said, Granny, I've got to do a PowerPoint presentation on myth. And I said, goodness, I've just been reading some notebooks on my, my father, exactly on myth. So I was, I don't know what, he'd probably got them from the Encyclopedia Britannica or mm -hmm. other places. So I was, I was able to give her all these quotations. And, and I think I would be more happy sort of aligning myself with with the idea that it's more than just a place that there's layers of dreams and memories and yeah. and when you think of the Priscillas well it was just up here the Normans didn't manage to get as far as this did they the little wild chaps in the hills yes. stayed, stayed up in the Priscillas and shouted rude things at <laughs> the other the other side of the landscape um, so there's all that that mingles. Um, and you, do you think that sets it aside then from the rest of Pembrokeshire, really? Is it unique? Oh, it in is. That sense? Well, yes. And there was a programme only recently, wasn't there, about um, wine mine, where they now believe that the blues, that, you know, and this long um, and, and, and careful archaeological mm -hmm. excavations about this is really where the blue stones come from. Um, and, and how they might have been taken and the, uh, and the various arguments with Brian John and, 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 and other people. Uh, was it glaciers, half glaciers or not? Or did they drag them? I can remember when they did the dra dragging a stone from... A Sh lake. Shiny lass. Well, whatever it was, but I can remember them coming along the bottom road past Brenhifrid. Yes accompanied sort of by a chip ban or something you know for for food for these people and they're dragging dragging this stone i think they took it down to cosheston didn't they and then it sank or or, yes. or, or something 
So So in the in Clebran, you know, the, yeah, the local yeah. um newspaper for the area, mm. they um I presume it's the editor Heaven Wynn writes yeah. it. Mm. But he, he writes as if he's um the stone, as if he's Shani Lass. Oh right. And writes memories from her from her journey. Well, and I think from uh, where she lies now, perhaps I'm, I'm not sure, but um, like a sort of that pre, pre famous pre Raphaelite painting of the of, the, of Ophelia, yes, uh, or not Ophelia, but yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. Um, yes, well, well, why not? And I mean, all that sort of contributes to a sense of place, doesn't mm-hmm. it? So. You know, on one level, you can say this is this is the place, and it used to be more rushy than this. Um, but since we've cut it and the cows have chomped it, it's um, mm. it's less rushy. So that has altered, perhaps, the number of of little orchids that actually grow there. But they're still growing in in plenty of other places, and that's that's the the angle. You know that an agro- a, a, an agronomist or or what a good signifier of. of, of the, of, of, of ancient grassland, really. the, yes, and so that's one aspect of the sense of place. But then there's all all the other aspects, you know, such as you we we, we saw mm-hmm. in 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 mm-hmm. Erwin's poem. So I don't think a sense of place it's one thing, and aspects of it is it unique yeah. to personal experience of a place as well. Well, could I think personal experience contributes to a great cloud. Of of what the place is. Mm. Um, well, you were describing your paintings. How everyone's got a different lens. Yes, yes. I suppose it's the same with the area, in some ways. Do you think? Yes, although probably all the people that have come from elsewhere to live here, their their reaction was similar to mine back in nineteen sixty three or whenever it was. Mm. Mm. You know, from Hertfordshire. You know, this is this is wild. This is the same. I don't know, like the ancient religious people, you know, the monks and so on would mm. would would seek out an island, a barren place where there wasn't too much impinging on them, perhaps, no. or no. Um, too you know too much civilization. Well, there's not, you know, there's not a lot of civilization. No. Just just round here, is there in the immediate? Yeah. And you look up at Garnavra, you know those those yeah, those rocks yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah. That was the blowhole of a volcano, however many millions of years ago, when Vulcan Kerun was a volcano. Yeah. And so I suppose that Minith Krun, Krun, you know that the shape of that of that hill was possibly a you know the lava de- de- deposit. Mm-hmm. You might be right. Yeah. Well, you just don't know. I mean, I certainly know that the soil on this farm is is absolutely fantastic. And that's probably from possibly, possibly. that, and then the glaciation, mm. and all the then the great rocks which were dumped out of which this house is built, and which um, the predecessors who lived here moved a large portion of them to the bottom of the field by the house, but since they probably only had perhaps a horse and cart. There's some then that when my tenant reseeded that field with the benefit of a, you know, a digger, mm. he could pull out others. Mm. And and so there's more, there's more stones. So that's, uh, again, another little chapter in the, in the, in the story of, of, of the land as yeah, such. Yeah. And, and when, of course, all these rocks, when, you know, when they were first, first here, that was when the ancient people would have looked at them and seen significance, and, and you know, built. You know, for all I know, is that that right up at the top there, where my chap who was excavating up the pond mm-hmm. there for drainage said, "There's an enormous stone here." You know, I couldn't even begin to put the digger under it. <laughs> well, you know, was that a, a cromlech fallen down? No, yeah. we don't know. You'd have to go. Well, there's lots that have been moved over time. Yes, yes. When they got tractors, mm. as opposed to mm. uh, the horse, they realised they could move them. Mm. Yeah, you know, along towards Minakla B. Mm. There's one that's part of a of a field bank, isn't there? Yes. Um, yes. Lots of them have been used as as um, gate, gate posts. posts. And of course, there's um, as you go up above Llanacha, mm. um What's the name of it? 
you know, with the, the, the stone row that if you stood one end of it, of course the name's gone now, and it, if it lines up, you can see Mount Leinster on the Wicklow Hills. Oh. This is Roger Worsley, whose book I illustrated many, many years ago, mm. and that this was his research. He wrote about that then? Yes, he did. And he was an archaeologist? Yes, he was. Uh, you know, a great populizer of archaeology, but, but uh, you know, a serious archaeologist. And if the... Now, I may not be right on this. If the full moon rises directly above the line, and I can't... I can't what is the name of this stone row up above Flanachar? Uh, it's, it, it's all part of a field bank now. Is and it the, near is Parkameru? Parkameru. Yes. Yes, and the stones are as big as this house, yes. practically, and they're yeah. part of a field bank. Well, if you stood... There's an ancient drawing, which I did, I think, copy for the coastal cottages of Pembrokeshire history. Did you see one of those little booklets I that so. I illustrated in the 80s? Well, I found some ancient print in 1850-60 when the stones were still standing up. And if you stood at one end of them and the full moon set directly behind Mount Leinster, there would be an eclipse of the sun. If the new moon set directly behind this line, there would be an eclipse of the moon. Wow. So how long did they take to work that out? So interesting, isn't it? And it it was mind-boggling. And the name of that site? Parker Meru, yes. Yes, obviously Field of, of the, the Dead. The Dead, yes. Um, what significance lies there? You know? uh, Roger had this um, theory that it was a sort of sacred place, so they... Um, called it that to stop people from snooping around at to night <laughs> yes but you know that was that was his yes. idea but you know that is again you look at one of those stones don't you and you couldn't it would it would fill this room they're enormous yeah and how did they move them i mean all that sort of thing plays into your mm. and here's you know the drawing of the castle in in the, the the mural there's the huge rock which you can mm. see from the field that that's the village side mm. you could only imagine that the castle itself which was a welsh castle and not you know it was mm. for, it was for spying out mm. the normans mm. um that take pot shots at them if they were seen to be coming out from um you know it was probably wood but then it it burnt down mm. Yes, a lot of the the Welsh castles, I think, were mm, mm. wood, and then some of them perhaps were were then built in stone yes. on top of it, but but not that one. No, no. so and they have done uh, archaeological dig there. I think have they in in Mount Clochog, Yes. Yeah, I think they have. Um, I don't know how many years ago now, but the red archaeology was involved. There, yes, yes. Um, yes, I'll move on then to some archaeology as we're talking about it. Do you have a favourite archaeological site within the Preseli area? I know there's quite a few of them. Mm, I find that difficult to answer. Um, by archaeology, you, you mean the very ancient ones, the Crom the Cromlech. Possibly Gorsvar. That's where I've drawn mostly. It is lovely, isn't it? Yes, so yes. That's a a stone circle. Yes, um, in what was a sort of glac glacial lake, mm. really. It's not one of the oldest no. ones locally, is it? It's No. I can't remember what the age of that one no, is. No, I can't. I did I did some drawings of it for, for a publication, um, so I would have looked it up at the time, but I have now completely forgotten. But yes, that's an extraordinary place. It's got a lovely feeling about you, it. You know, it? huge, huge expanse, and you can think then of of all of, of not one but two ice ages, which drop drop their stuff, you know, there on the way, perhaps further, mm. you know, taking mm. stones from Carnmine mm. to near the Avon and whatever. So, yes, so Carnmine is one of the outcrops that they 
think some of the stones may have come from? Well, there's one, again, I illustrated it for Roger Worsley's book that he wrote for Coastal Cottages of Pembrokeshire when I was doing all their um, cottage illustrations. There is a huge stone there which looks as if it was sort of cut and then never taken. Mm. But there's a few quarries in the Caselli, aren't there? And there's one, the, the, the other side near... Carn Goidog. That one? Ye yes. That's on the, the ridge line. That's on this car. And, and then there's, ah, oh, there's Carnalu. I think perhaps that would be be my favourite one. So that's a, a small hill fort. Though, yes, is it, it is. And you can see there's a, now what do you call it, where there's two lines of stones where if the invaders or attackers Ram from... Ramparts. Uh, yeah, no. no. Cheval... Cheval de Freeze. You freeze, that's it. Yes. Um, and in fact, if you go up on Voile Drigan... So that's another, obviously, yeah, hill fort. Fort, yes. And look, and look across. You're almost looking down on Garnalu. Yes. And then you see across to Garn Goidog, and then you look across to Carn Lingley. That's it, that's another hill fort. Another hill. Yeah. You get a sense of the, mm. of the sort of uh, Iron Age ancestors... Um, well, uh, uh, Iron Age neighbours, you know, possibly shouting at one another across. Um, well, they'd have been in sight of each other. In sight of each other, they? and you know, what on earth went on? You've got no idea. Mm. But yes, um, it's a lovely spot there, Carnaro. Yes, it is. It is, and there's a place I I like it because you can you can park just along the bottom and and paint mm -hmm. and um, mm. and and see it. Yes. I once met a chap and he was, yes, he's going up on there on his horse. Yes, that is that is an extraordinary place. Hmm. Carnalu and Carningley also have a, have a figure in the rocks. Am I right in saying that? I've not heard of that. Do you mean one that you can see? Hmm. Yeah, so Carnalu's got, um, I think, a feminine shape in the rocks. From, from, from where do you see it? I don't know from which, which angle now, but there's some from on the top of the big stones there. And then Car Carningley's definitely got the shape. If you're looking from um, sort of the Grimberian side, mm. you can see the shape of a woman lying on her, her back. But then that's that's a shape that people's imaginations have imputed onto it, yes. isn't it? Yes. Um, that's a name of, of, oh dear, it's a word I discovered recently, which is the which of course I've forgotten now. Um, which no, 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 no. no, it's the actual when you see something in the in the clouds in abstract ah. shapes or the fire or the rocks. Um, I, I again, I, I put it on on Instagram. I'll I'll, I'll think in a minute. It's it's inevitably from a Greek word. Interesting. Um, yeah, it means sort of shape and image and so on, and it's what it's what you see yeah. see in something. You know, there's a there's a there's a face there. There's a yeah. um, there's a man. You know, and it's it's David Jones, the Sleeping Lord. Does the land wait the sleep, or or yeah. is the wasted land that very Lord who yeah. sleeps? Yeah. Um, I'm annoyed now that I've forgotten the word. Anyway, yes, it'll come to you. Yes, afterwards. it'll come to you the, the minute the minute you stop. Yes. Do you know much about the? The local, say, myths and legends, then relating to the landscape. I know there um, are quite a few. Well, the Mab in the Mabinogion, you got took trois over at Menachlog B, but you can you can think how it could sort of be half true because all this was forested, wasn't it? At one point, we're mm -hmm. below the tree line. Yeah. And and in those for you know and and, and up up along the top was the golden road where where then people would would walk, mm. um, but the forests were undoubtedly populated by wild boars and mm -hmm. there was undoubtedly one that was larger and fiercer than the rest, mm. and so it's that kind of thing that gets incorporated into myth, isn't it? And so then there's the story of, you know, you had to get it in the comb and the scissors and, and, and so yes. on, which is, again, an ancient idea of, of emasculation, isn't it? It's taking, uh, taking his, his hair, you mm. know, almost like, like, like Samson mm. and, and, and so on. Mm. Um, so, yes, there's, there's that one. And the stones that relate to that legend. And then there's, there's uh, a Carrig maybe on Arthur, 
and and bath Arthur along the top. You know, one of the many places that Arthur is 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 buried <laughs> from here to Cornwall, and they shared him uh, out. <laughs> yeah, they shared they shared him out. Um, but again, you can you can say, well, they're they're the sort of double identity. Are the, are they stones? Are they gateposts? Are they you know they're mm. they're both mm. a- according to what successive generations have mm. said well, said they are. Well, or there's quite a few cairns here that that apparently are supposed to be giants or. Um, well, yes, you can you can see, uh, and if that stone that I talked about and my top marsh were upended, that would absolutely be a giant. I'm quite sure. Um, it's it's what it's what you see it mm. in in, mm. in your mind mm. to be. And I'm just trying to look up that that word because it's annoying me. Where is it? Yes, go on. Um. You spend pa- Paridolia. Paridolia. Yeah. So that's the name of of that of, of when you look at something at the clouds and say, "Look, there's a dragon." Paradolia. Yes, and and if you look at the origins yeah. of the word, it is it is inevitably from the Greek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, paradolia. That's fascinating. It. Yeah. Um, do you spend much time walking um, in the Preseli at all? I walk just round here, really. Um, I go up through the through the forest at, at Glen Aaron, but only if I've got company. I mean, that's a, that's another lovely walk. Um, I I tend to get my exercise, you know, round the farm, going to, going to get firewood, um, you know, or, or or doing something on the farm. I I wouldn't say I'm a I'm a great walker, because it all takes time. Mm. What about in the past? Did you used to do more walking in the past? Possibly. Mm. Have you walked the Golden Road across? Uh, the along the top, not all of it. No, mm. the last time I really went along the top was when John was doing his, my son was doing his Duke of Edinburgh silver award. When he and a friend camped just below Garnavra, they having walked along from Voldrigarden, mm. camped there, and then they were going to walk back. And of course, the morning. They went back. The fog came down, and I watched them, you know, rather as, as <laughs> Mallory's mother myself watched him just dis- disappearing up into the fog, <laughs> and then it came down really foggy, and I thought, hmm, hope they're going to be all right. Somebody else's boy there as well. So in the end, when I knew they they were going to go and come down over Talmenes, mm. um. I thought, no, I'd better go and go and see. And I parked my van just below Tal Minith and, and walked right up the side mm. until you and along the ridge is the the, the bed stones um bear the Kerig Machogion. Kerig Kerig the the knights the knights of art yeah, along the top. And you know, I was going towards Foyle Conqueroin and it was very windy and very foggy. And, and going on and on and, and shouting to see if they were there and they weren't there and I, oh crumbs um, so in the end I turned round I had been up there anyway with mm. John you know looking uh, mm. for things and so on um, and came back down to find that, that the boys had perhaps wisely turned round from the top come come back down over Minith Crun arrived at the house seen the note that I'd left um, and came over with their bicycles, so it was all. They had to it, come and find you. Then. They had to come and find me. So um, that was possibly, but I've I've never forgotten that going in in the wind and the rain, mm. and these stone these great tall stones appearing out of the mist. Um, so it's so changeable on the top there. Isn't yes, it? that was definitely a bit of bit of paradolia. Seeing seeing those great <laughs> ancient. 
things coming. Well, and you can see why people get think. get the idea. These yeah. oh, these were actual people, and I'm sure mm. they've moved since I've been here last. Mm. You know, and there there the stories happen. Of course, of course. In a, in a in a richness down here because of the sort of the the, the Celtic imagination, mm. which again is is the is the difference from the more home counties of England, mm. that there is this extraordinary fluidity um, mm. of what things are or might be, mm. which has gone into, you know, the poetry of David Ap Gullam. That's when I first, you know, became interested in that, when, mm. I, um, it, when I was working with Erwin Ar George for the, for the work for the Eisteddfod, mm. and I became interested in, in, in the Welsh poetry and the King Hanedd. And then I started looking at the poems and seeing the imagery in them, and it was David Ap Gwillam's the poem Anul, and Anul. he saw Anul as Cni Telwid Gwintlwid Gwantlais, Cuflu Amug, Cufla Mice, and that's what you, you see across there, and it floats in between mm. those two, just like a fleece mm. over the ground, over the, over the land. Um, mm. Do you think the language and the landscape um, are yes, it, it, intertwined it, it, here? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, and the whole, the language and the landscape, yes. If you're a um, poet. Ye I yes, or if, you know, also as, as, a, as a visual artist, um, the climate and the landscape di sort of dictate also the way that man has responded to the natural forms, the way that the, you know, we, we're all these stones on the mountainside, mm. so we build something with them, which has to follow the contours, which of course, if you go up to North Wales, is even more meandering and, mm. and so on. Absolutely not your straight lines and, and, and nicely clipped hedges. No. Um, so yes, all that's part of the, of the Celtic and, and Welsh Yes, aesthetic in a in a very broad sense. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, it's not not classical at all, and I think that's that's what I found very interesting when I was doing doing a lot of research for for that um, for the for the Eisteddfod in Potomatic in in nineteen eighty six mm. when I did the piece of work you know which responded to Kerr Davod, um, yeah, and that you know. When I was talking to Erwin, lucky enough, yes. So, do you believe that the landscape of the Bruxelles has an impact on the way that that you live? Oh yes, it, it, it completely. You Comple live around the landscape. Yes. The well, and and the and the weather. Yes, you, yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. It would be foolish to do try and do otherwise, wouldn't it? <laughs> be working against it, I suppose. Yes. No, no. You've got to find a find a way. Uh, yes, but haven't haven't all societies working um, in various outposts of the world had to do the same? You know, if it's very dry or very whatever, you've got to adapt ad 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 adapt completely. Mm. How much do you know about the plants and animals that live in the Prasali? Do you think? Probably not not a huge amount. No. What that. about just on on your land? You you know oh. what plants grow and oh oh yes, on the land, particularly on the on the marsh, yes. Mm. Um, and you were saying that you've got orchids. Oh growing. yes, yes. And I look as when I walk up and down the road, you know, and see, and see what's there. But I'm not primarily a botanist at all. No, but do you take just? A I, I take I take an interest. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were um, perhaps doing more farming mm -hmm. yourself, yourself and Cliff, um, can you describe, you know, what a, a year would look like in the farming calendar for you? Well, in the winter, I would be depending on how well we had what he used to run a hundred sheep ewes here all the year round and fed them in the winter. 
What three uh, were uh, they? Well, he crossed Wealth Mountain with Cheviot um, and and other things. Um, yes, mostly Welsh Mountain, Cheviot. Um, so I would be helping him, but he became ill as a result of using organophosphate sheep dip in the early 90s. And so from 1990 to 1995, when he died, things, things were quite difficult. Um, so I would probably, you know, when he was well, I certainly in lambing time, I would be helping all the time, feeding Molly lambs. Uh, and I, I do remember at the time when I was getting ready for this, I stepped it and and fascinated by everything that I was discovering and talking to Edwin George, mm. that I did have six Molly lambs to feed at the same time. And it, I, I remember finding it extremely difficult. It's quite a task, isn't yes, it? Yes, it was, but, but not just, if, if if that's what you did, you know that's fine. But my my mind was being tugged apart the whole time, and I I do remember how difficult it was. Mm. Um, well, you can't leave a hungry lamb, no. no. But then you're halfway through, just finding something fascinating and reading, doing notes, and and I was working out a way of of doing this work, which was using the letter forms um, of the King Hannes, you know, of the various yes. patterns. Um, and the 24 measures of, of poetry and so on and and at regular intervals you know one would be completely interrupted and that that really it's a thing that happens to to all sorts of people and it is it is very difficult and you respond in whatever way you do according mm. to your circumstances and the sort of person you are um, but that that wasn't you know in the early years it, it when he was fit You'd be going around fencing. No, no, I would be doing book illustrations and and painting and having exhibitions. Uh, but then, and then after night when he died in nineteen ninety five, uh, the place was it was in a bit of a mess. I have to say, and I had to really set to and renovate that the all of the barns where we'd done the in wintering and the lambing inside. Um, gradually getting it to the the state that it is at the moment where with my wonderful builder Raymond you know who's done all sorts of things and yeah. and, and and built up you know built a new roof and then done this and then and then done that with recycled material to make it to make it a place where where the Priscelli art group enjoy yeah. coming coming and painting every week yeah. um, so I now have a have a tenant and I'm still involved in the sense that I, I look at fences as well and, and see what needs doing and, and look around and decide that I would like, you know, to uh, clear off some more gorse or pr prune, trim certain trees. So you or, keep in touch with oh, oh, the very, management of it. Oh, yeah. very, very much so, mm -hmm. yes. And do you enjoy that? Oh, I love it, yes, yeah. yes. And that's that's the exercise rather than than going for walks in the Priscellis. Yeah. Um, you know, he's going down the bottom marsh and thinking, oh, I've got a gate in the barn. I think I think I'll ask so and so to let's let's get a gate here yes. and then we can fence a bit here and then we can burn that mm. bit of gorse. Mm. And yeah, the family come and we set fire to it and and the children make dens in the trees and somebody else comes and cuts down more trees and that goes to um, that goes to firewood. And then I say to John, as I did only ten days ago, oh, I would like that bit of if, if that bit of bank came down, where the cows have started to walk through, um, they could walk straight through without uh, without climbing over it. And before I know it, he's he's dug it away, and said, look, this is clay. And so the children are immediately gathering up clay, first throwing it at each other, and then taking it into the barn and making making pots with it and and mm. putting pigment in it. So um, I'm all the time interested you know in in the land and what mm. comes from it and maybe we've found some some orchid or or other plant or then there's a field of bracken and i think no i'm not having you cutting the bracken because i think uh, it's a, it is a bit dicey you have to be a bit careful i think with bracken so mm. i've decided that possibly somebody else can come and do that this year 
um, in the, the last bit of bracken that remains uh, after the reseeding in this in this small field. Um, you know, and and so it goes on. So mm, you know, it's um, constant. Yes, constant. it is. It is. Well, anybody who's got a got a property or a or a bit of land knows mm. what it's like. Mm. And then, you know, the rivers pooling in such and such a place. Mm. And so you think, well, maybe maybe if we just cleared that out, um, you know, the cow can go across there now rather than here, mm. and so on and so on. Um, do you think the weather has changed from when you used to farm? Do you know? I, I do wonder. Um, we did get the heat wave last year, didn't we? And I mean, mm. this this February has been extraordinary. It's been it, very dry. Isn't it's it? been very dry and and very high pressure, which has been very unusual. Mm. Um, I think it probably must have changed, but I don't keep. I'd have to look back. You know, I don't. I mm. mean, this time last year there was storm Eunice, wasn't it? Almost exactly. February normally has a, a bit of a storm. Yes, well, it? shh, shh, we haven't had it yet. <laughs> no. Yes, you know, yes, yes. This time last year, tomorrow, the first anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine. The the few days before, we'd had the storm and some some pine trees that Cliff had planted on the bank were dangerously leaning towards the electricity, mm -hmm. or I thought they might be. So I phoned up the you know western power and you know within 24 hours they were here felling really? felling those trees because they were you know, well the they cusp. might have been you know mm. I, I probably would have been all right but they certainly couldn't take any risks no. so so there they there they were yeah exactly a year ago um felling the pine trees and and leaving them in a pile i had uh, ideas of you know building a pole barn or something but i don't know <laughs> it'll come to anything but but that's the answer to your question in how how involved one is you know in, in the in the landscape mm -hmm. in the farm. Moving on to um, food, then, um, mm. do you eat very similarly now to how you used to do when you first arrived here? Are you, have your habits changed? Not really. No, try to eat as you're supposed to. You know, vegetables mm -hmm. and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you shop at anywhere particularly locally? I, I like to shop locally in the village, mm. but there are things that you can't get. So when I go up to see my partner in Cardigan, mm. um, you know, I, w I will go to a bigger shop there. But, um, no, I mean, during during COVID, uh, Sarah's shop was absolutely marvellous. So mm. I'd go, you know, go there all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about um, tourism in the area, um, about visitors coming to the Preseli? Well, they provide a considerable part of my livelihood. Um, so do they come and... In, in, in the summer, you know, I'm part of the open studios, yes. So they and come and visit the studio and yes, buy your work there? Yes, yes. Um, well, I suppose like everything else, you know, it, 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 it needs to be managed. Mm. And 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 up here, the roads are never. Um, never get to the state that they are. For instance, trying to get down to the beach in Poppet through St Dogmores. Uh, you know, wh tricky. which can be very very tricky. And I would imagine that going down to Aberythe is the same. Um, and there are various places. I don't go to any of these places in the summer. No, because they're very busy. Because they're very busy, mm -hmm. but you know, Tenby and, and and other places just love love to go in the winter. Mm. So when visitors come to the studios, where do they go um, nearby as well? Where do, where are they normally visiting in the Preseli? Do they oh, do they cheer with you? Very very difficult to generalise because I've been here for so long, and I have a a, a sign at the gate. Uh, I mean, only last week a young couple came and they said we'd be meaning to. We only live in Manakwadi. We've been meaning to visit you for years. So, uh, a, a lot of it is, has built up mm. over the years. Mm. And then in August, there's the open studio, which a, a brochure goes out, which is, um, you know, distributed widely. And I, I have an entry in the coast to coast. So does that um, draw people from afar? Then do people, people. Do you have, um, say, 
um, international visitors often drop in as well? Not many, and perhaps most of them I would have known anyway. You know, they don't come because of advertising, they come... Do they make a regular pilgrimage if, they, if they're in... If they are visiting the Pasali area? Do you mean international people or, well, or yes. just anybody? You... Well, it, it's usually people, I suppose, who've got some sort of a connection. Mm. If one was going to make risk a bit of a generalisation, it's often people who've had some sort of family connection with the area and then for whatever reason have moved away mm. but are coming, but coming back. To, 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 to stay with Mamgi or have got a little place of their own or, mm. or whatever. Mm. Um, and do they take a bit, they want a bit of your artwork then to... Probably, yes. a bit of that place in, perhaps? Yes, possibly. Mm. Um, although as, it be, as my what I do becomes... Um, it's sort of increasingly oblique regarding actual um, view, recognisable yes. views, they're a slightly different sort of person. Although, mm. you know, as I said, it's a very wide range of, 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 of tastes. Um, mm. And some people do, do want something that they can place, in which case they buy the sort of thing that you've, you've seen on my Instagram, you know, the, the pastels and so on that I, w I will do standing at that table looking out of the window or looking out of yeah, the, yeah. the barn or studio or whatever. Um, and then others who, uh, you know, have a different experience as to what they've been looking at for years, they, they will buy something different. Mm. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. So what do you think are the biggest challenges the area faces from increasing tourism? Well, for the for the Welsh culture to keep its head above water. You think that's Well, that it, that is a big challenge, isn't it? Because yeah. otherwise um people are going to sort of go, go, gobble up what they've come to see. Yes. Yes. You no, know, which is the same it's the same to... worldwide, isn't it? Yes. That people, you know, e even if you talk about going to see some tribe in the Gobi Desert, uh, you know, you precisely don't want to impinge on them because then they won't be as they were. Because you're almost diluting. You know, well, you're you're making um, you're you're having an effect on them one way or the other, but perhaps it's inevitable. I mean, there are tribes. I did read. Uh, or or here something that that there's a there's a tribe somewhere it's probably in Southeast Asia who have never never seen Westerners, and the people have made quite sure that they've gone away and and, and locked the door as it were we're not we're not going there again, um, to make quite sure that they can as 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 far as possible because they're that, that they are preserved well in a in a much much tinier way that's happened everywhere with what are seen as desirable parts of the world mm. where there is wildness and and clean air um yeah of course it's desirable to come and visit to get, here, yeah, and, and, in, here. and in doing so yes you've got you've well i'm sure that that, that this is the concern of people who's mm. who have uh influence in these matters yeah so I'm, I'm sure that they everybody shares a sort of similar concern. Mm. It just depends exactly on how it's going to be implemented. Um, mm. You know, if you're national parks planning officer or or whatever, mm. um, you know they they wouldn't allow a little row of, of houses up there. No, you know, no. whereas somebody might think, oh, oh, it'd be a nice place for the holiday. Well, mm. um, yes, the other side of the road is the national park. Ah, that's where the that's that's, that's the where the I'm just not in it, ah, which is perhaps fortunate. In that, well, uh, perhaps I thought it. it, it came no, through no, it's the other side of the road. Ah. So little Menith Bach <coughs> there, the little house. No, that's that's just as it, which which is featured in 
goodness, there's you know. So there's someone still living in the n- house there. No, they don't now. When I first came, there was an old lady it was rented to, and then Mamgie Jenkins lived there for a while, and Denzel's, it, Denzel's mother. When the old lady, whose name of course I've forgotten, went down somewhere near a new moat where she lived with her family. Um, and Mamgi lived there, and now it's a, it's a holiday place. Um, are there more places locally that perhaps were permanent dwellings that are holiday accommodation now? Yes, instead? I'm sure there must be. Because I suppose Menisklenbach was a farm before it was assimilated into Bronlas. Mm. Mm. And certainly Bryn Morris is a holding, Trasnant is a holding, Mine fluid is a holding. Um, and the one between between mine fluid and Charles Nant, um, that's that's a holding, and they mm. they're all of of twenty. And then, as I say, there's one up to the top side. There's there's Menith Crun, and then there was a place called Red Chickens, and then below that, there was another. There's another ruin near to what is now the forest where you can walk through to Mine Clochog yes. and then there's which was oh, the, yes, the next the, 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 the next door neighbour to Icebed mm. for instance mm. where there are very ancient stones really yes yes on Icebed farm St- standing stones then or um they partly covered up no there's not an in sort of an impressive cromlich but I think there's there's something, something ancient yes it? and the lady who lives there um, I know I did go down and, and, and chat to them. Um, she's very interested uh, in, in, in the history. Have they been recorded, you know? Yes, I think they have. Yes. I'm sure they have. Yes, because some other friends came who had read about them somewhere and therefore wanted to see where they were and we did have a bit of a look round. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So... To reflect a little bit, um, what is the best thing about living here in the in the Preseli sort of area? Might be more I'd, than one I'd, thing. Well, <laughs> I've become so embedded in it that it's almost impossible. You know, if you ask somebody who had only just come, mm. they might say, "Oh, well, you know, we haven't got the fumes and the." Um, the rush and everything, but I've been here since since 1967, really. Um, so you feel embedded in the in the area. Y- yeah, y- yes. Um, what is the best thing? I suppose it's what I the, still the thing that I first first saw the the wildness. Mm. Um, that hasn't and, changed. And for you. No, and perhaps. Because if you're an artist, you're always a bit of an outsider. You have to be. You, your, your group, if you like, is is other particular people. But it isn't. It isn't always the the little local community that certainly would have existed round here. You know, with all mm. the little farms going to help one another. You're you're less likely, perhaps, to feel comfortable in that sort of a community but more where you can um, let your mind roam mm. um, and particularly well you know if, if as well as painting you're interested in in you know philosophy I mean I spent nine eight years doing a PhD in philosophy in, mm. in Lampeter um, so there again, although you're away from, um, you know, centres of places where you can go to mm. lectures and what have you, you, you can go to those places. You don't necessarily have to be just down the road from them. No. And you can go to London and see the see the great galleries and mm. the ex- exhibitions and and come home and, you know, digest them all. Is there anyone else you could picture yourself living apart from here? France. <laughs> You're fond of France. Very, very fond of France. Mm. Always have been. And you go regularly then? 
Well, my son and daughter-in-law bought an old property ah. near Cognac, which they've renovated because they work in a boarding school, so they don't really have their own home in this country. I understand. So that, that is their place where John, who is a very keen gardener, you know, and, and likes home renovation, mm -hmm. they go, go out and that's, that's their place. And then they let it out. I mean, possibly this, you know, the same thing is happening over there mm. as, well, as, 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 as here. You know, foreigners mm. are coming in of course. And, and buying. But it, interestingly, with the French, they, the, the idea of renovating old properties is not nearly so common as it is in this country. Really? And it, no, no. And John and Sarah, who both speak absolutely fluent French, um, and have got a number of friends in France. Have only have only one particular friend who, who was also a teacher that John met when he was uh, doing his his year out, um, who has renovated an old property. And when they, the, the funny story is when they went to the estate agent, thinking that you know this was the sort of area they'd love love to have a house. This was before mm. all this Brexit rubbish mm. and you know everything else. Um, and they went into the estate agent and you know looked around. Got you've got a got an old place, a longere, you know, which is like a the Welsh longhouse. Oh, and the, and the lady said, yes, oh yes, well we've got this. This is a nice one here, but I'd hurry up if I were you because all the Brits are coming to buy them. <laughs> so, no, they were quite pleased that they were being taken for French. Um, but it's it's the same kind of thing. Other other people come and think, oh wow. You know, this is this is wonderful. This is mm. different. Look, and in the case of France, oh, sunflowers, and it's warm. Mm. Of you, course, you it know, you, you you can have yeah. a picnic in February. Um, you no, know, and I I can go out there, and I think one of the happiest things I remember about being out in France is you know what wandering across the fields, and a farmer came to feed his cattle, and and being able to have a chat with him you know mm. and these are uh, oh they're limousine cross you know and and yes. what what are you feeding them on and 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 that was wonderful mm. and their old neighbor who is now alas died monsieur charon um who, who spoke not a word of english was was so so john and sarah were able to converse with him. i mean he remembers it was in occupied france he remembers the germans stabling their horses in his farm wow. yeah and he wow. told wonderful stories and when he was really very old he took me out for a ride in his car it wasn't all that long ago yes and we went and he'd had a telescope and we looked around at the vineyards oh. and no I, I i i loved the sense of otherness about me but you know that's that's not to say that one would really live in in France, but no, I, really I, I I very much feel at home there and absolutely love you know, talking to. And only recently, last October, uh, although I had already visited once, John from the house drove us down to the cave of Peshmerl, where you still see the original twenty to nine thousand year old drawings on the wall. Painting, yes, then. yes, the the real ones, mm -hmm. um, absolutely, absolutely extraordinary. Um, and then able able to talk to the man who was who was showing us round. Um, it's interesting though because the maid. Oh yeah, I had his name up there. Until you're talking I, about to, visiting somewhere, but obviously the, get, the, to to live there it is entirely different. But to the people that you're experiencing, the people that you're experiencing, they're enriching that experience. Oh, for you. completely, mm. and finding something in common, whether it's a French farmer seeing what he feeds his cows mm. on, or mm. the paleo mediateur um, at Pêche Merle and talking to him as to why why are these these are the very famous spotted horses mm. you you probably I think I probably you seen you them. must have done look now that's the when I came back oh yes they're beautiful as well aren't they they're extraordinary and I went round I went round the cave drawing oh. all the time I'd been there once before with a friend mm. but this time beautiful. This time it was, yeah. That that's a photograph of them, mm. and then oh. talking to him about what, why the horses are spotted, because 
you know, somebody says, are they are they the ancient Appaloosas, for yeah. instance? Yeah. Or, or is it this or is it that? And he said that somebody came up with the story that the horses were seen in the dappled shade and so they appeared to have spots. Um, and obviously a lot of horses have dapples have spo- anyway. Have dapples anyway. So there's all manner of Beautiful. possibilities. And then, of course, there's all these... There's 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 the sun prints. You can see them. So the this is this, this, they're there. Mm. Um, and and I haltingly put forward the possibility that because they uh, you know p- they were already playing with the medium you know and making splodges of one sort or mm-hmm. another that actually the spots could come just from a sense of playfulness of course you know they found out or they they for the hands you they found out that they yeah get the pigment in their mouths and blow onto their hand well perhaps they found out you know that that's what they could do with the spots and you know there's one oh let's have some more spots here um and any child any child and playing and 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 then actually on that horse there's a drawing of a fish, which was 9,000 years before. And so they scribbled on each other's pictures. And that's what other people do and anyway. And that's what, other, that's what we do mm. anyway. But it also reminded me of, again, you asked about the Mabinogion, mm. the ancient myth, the story of Peret, Peredia and the burning tree. Yes. Akerlana Ravon, the well I goiden dal, Rain Hanna, a honey and chosky or quiet he they breathe, Hanna Rala Arach and Dial Irani. Mm. Well, when you think about it, I can remember my talking to my dear old friend Roger, and he said, Look, you look at a tree in the sunset, perhaps it's the autumn, in a strong light, and the one half is burning. Mm. So it's it's this magic that mm. comes from, you know, possibly just ordinary observation. It's observa- that duality as well. It's isn't the it? duality as well, and that's the, I think, you know, part of the whole thing of the culture of of the, uh, of the of the Welsh, you know, Celtic mm. aesthetic, which of course in in times really gone by was was shared by. By Europe as well, yeah. because that's that's the whole migration of peoples mm. that that mm. that came up um, through that area and eventually into into Brittany and eventually mm. across. Um, so that is that sort of thing that goes goes through my mind, you know, when I look at look at everything. And you were saying about going to France and speaking to the local farmers and so on. Do you think people love to do that when they come here? Do you think that they love to see um, oh, oh, yes. the yeah. farming going on? The, the, the real old, thing. Real farming and yeah, so yes, on. They'd, they'd, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm sure they do, and they'd want to, um, mm. yes, or say, look at a chap with his sheepdogs or, or, or whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, I'm sure, because it's genuine. I'm sure that. And it's, bo- it's born of necessity and one's response to the landscape. Mm. Uh, you, you, you could not have a sheepdog. That could run to to the other side of the hill. You'd never do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I suppose it's for us that have perhaps lived here for so long. It's second nature for us to see it happen, but for visitors, oh, it must be fantastic. It's complete novelty, isn't yes, it? Yes, it must be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why the you know television programs like One Man and His Dog. Um, and well, that kind of thing that our oh, farming programs now. Well, if you the see recent ones, the r- various recent mm-hmm. ones. Very um, popular. Yes, mm. yes, absolutely. And I, I suppose see. there hasn't, there's not much that's changed, has there? Apart from perhaps a quad bike now instead of a pony. It's yes, it's changed in intensity. You know, the amount of stuff that's now done in in barns is is huge, mm. and mm. so the impact of them. What are you going to do with all the slurry and the huge number mm. extra? Mm. You know, this 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 farm, you know, would have been. Uh, it's sort of three. Judging from the st- from the size of what is now my studio, it would have there were stalls. What did they milk six cows, and then it would have been followers. Um, mm. 
but it, that couldn't sustain a farm you, now. You couldn't but possibly. No. Well, I mean, that's that's gone, gone, gone. Mm. You know, hard life. Yes. You look, you look at. There's a huge rock just outside the door. It's 1869 on it, and I mean, it would have taken three or four men to move that to mm. say, right, you know, we're going to start here with the war. Christ, you know, you mm. could imagine them coming into this little house then, mm. uh, ready for their tea after a, mm. a, a day when yeah, there was, it was a full-time job to keep everything. Oh yes, and the and the woman, no, no sense of would like to be a, an artist or do anything else. You just had to get on with it. Yeah, you're quite right. Um, I think we've basically come to the come to the end now. Um. Is there anything else that um, you'd like to mention that I haven't asked about? Oh, I'll think about it when you're halfway up the track. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll have to come and do part two. <laughs> yes, well, um, I hope I've, I've given you what, no, what, what really... pe people will be interested in. You know, you've, you've certainly asked the questions that have prompted, mm -hmm. you know, all, all sorts of things. I'm glad I found the picture no, of it. it's been a real privilege to um, chat with you, Elizabeth. Well, um, thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks for asking me. I've enjoyed it very much. Br dragged sort of things into, into memory that I'd, <laughs> I'd almost forgotten. Yes.